We're left really with one option, that this is a falling away of those in the visible covenant community, which now is the church. In other words, at the end, there's going to be an apostasy in the worldwide visible physical church. Well, what does it mean that the Antichrist, this end time opponent of God's people, will set himself up in God's temple where he will do his deceiving work? Now, that's, that's verse 4. Look at um, uh, verse 4. We'll come back here. It says that this Antichrist opposes and exalts himself above every so called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God displaying himself as being God. Here's the key phrase. He takes his seat in the temple of God. Now, um, many think that this is referring to the notion of an actual physical temple that will be rebuilt again in Israel, in Jerusalem, at the very end of time. And it's this temple that the Antichrist will set himself up in. Um, very, uh, um, there, there are many uh, uh, Christian commentators who believe this. Um, they're very good commentators. I think there's a problem with that view, however. That is the view that this is a physical temple in which the Antichrist will come and, and desecrate. Um, for the reason that, that I, I think this is a problem is because of the nature of the apostasy itself. If this is a, an apostasy in Jerusalem and in Israel, then it makes sense that this would be a temple of God in Israel, a physical temple. But as I mentioned to you, this apostasy is likely not an apostasy um, of all those in the world, because the world's been unbelieving all along. How can people fall away from, how can the world fall away from unbelief when it's already in unbelief? Furthermore, this is not an apostasy in Israel. The reason I don't think it is is because the majority of Israel throughout her history and the majority of Jews today don't believe in Christ. And so how could this be a falling away of faith in Israel when the majority of Israel have always been in unbelief? So it's likely not a falling away in Israel. We're left really with one option that this is a falling away of those in the visible covenant community, which now is the church. In other words, at the end, there's going to be an apostasy in the worldwide visible physical church. And so I think that's, that's what we're talking about here. Um, now, if, if that is the case, then we have to look at this phrase here, he takes his seat in the temple of God. Is it a physical temple, or is it something else? Another kind of a temple. How would we discover that? Well, the key way to discover the meanings of phrases in Scripture is to look at other Scripture and let Scripture interpret Scripture. And so here, what we would do is we take the phrase, temple of God. Does that occur anywhere else in the Bible? Yes, it does. In the Old Testament, it appears 20 times, the temple of God. Always refers to a physical temple. Well, maybe that means it's a physical temple here. When we move to the New Testament, this phrase, the temple of God in Greek, on the house to the in Greek, occurs nine times. Not one time, except once, does it refer to a physical temple. All of the other times, it refers to the church as the spiritual temple of God. Now, let, let me uh, talk about that one time. Um, in Matthew 26, 61, I think you will remember this, Jesus says, well, the false witnesses quote Jesus as saying, I am able to destroy the temple of God in three days, rebuild it. Now there, Jesus first talks about the physical temple. But then when he says, and I will rebuild it in three days, that's not the physical temple. We're now talking about a transition from the physical temple in the Old Testament, where 20 times it refers to the physical temple, to the temple 
being transferred to Jesus and all those who identify with him.